Hi, and welcome to the OpenSAT Kit CFE Event Service Tutorial. The CFE Event Service allows applications to send timestamped text-based messages on the software bus. There are four classes or types of events, debug, informational, error, and critical. I'm currently showing two screens in OpenSAT Kit. The left screen lists the CFS apps that come pre-installed, and the right screen is the terminal window for the CFS. If the CFS were running on an embedded target, this terminal window could be a display connected to the serial port. By convention, every app sends an informational event message when it receives a no-op command. So I'm going to send a no-op command to the file manager. We see FM's no-op event message in the terminal window, and this was performed by the event service writing to port 1. The same event message is displayed in the Cosmos window. And this was performed by the event service sending the event message on the sulfur bus, then that was routed to the telemetry output app that then sent the message to Cosmos. Also note that file manager's valid command counter incremented by one. This diagram shows the event service context and data flow. I sent a no-op to the file manager app that is represented by the any app circle in this diagram. The no-op command sent an informational event message that was routed to the terminal window, or port 1, and it was routed in onto the software bus, as indicated by the double arrow. The output port arrow is dashed because this is an optional configuration. This diagram illustrates several other features of the event service. A few of the commands are listed here. Events can be enabled and disabled by type, and this can be done on a per-app basis or across the entire platform. Event generation can be enabled or disabled for an individual app. Apps can define event filters that determine whether every event message generated is sent. There's an optional event log as well. This is a circular buffer that records event messages. It can be configured to either overwrite the oldest message when it gets filled or to preserve all messages once it's filled and stop recording. The event service can be commanded to write the log to a file. There's also the ability to write all of the application event service configurations to a file. When apps register with the event service, they can define a filter for an event ID that will reduce the number of events sent. This could be useful if a persistent event would flood the system. Filters use a bit mass, so it does require knowledge of the binary numbering system and Boolean logic in order to use it. The filter mask is a bitwise Boolean AND performed on an event ID message counter that is incremented each time a message is sent. If the Boolean result is zero, then the message is sent. Filters can be reset by an application or by a ground command. A good example is the software bus's no subscriber event message. This is sent when the software bus attempts to send the message, but no application has subscribed to receive the message. This is a helpful message to get, especially when integrating a system. However, it will persist, so you don't want to be continually reminded of the situation. The default SB configuration is to allow the first four messages to be sent. I'm going to show you a few of the features discussed in the previous charts. I currently have three windows open. The main OpenSAT kit window. I have a window showing the CFS apps that come pre-installed and I have the CFS terminal window of the currently running CFS. In the main window, on the first tab, if I select the Event Service button, it will bring up the Event Service screen. And this screen provides complete access to all the Event Service functionality. In the top section, we have the ground interface. So we have the ability to send any of the commands to the Event Service. We can display the housekeeping packet and also the event message packet in a raw form. And we also have two commands that can dump information to files. And then this utility will actually bring up the Cosmos table manager so we can view those binary files. In the learn section, we have the ability to look at the training slides, which most of the slides here are a subset of those slides. And there's also an exercise script that uses Cosmos Script Runner. The status portion of this window is from the housekeeping packet of the event services. So one of the abilities is to enable and disable events of a particular type. So we know that the event message with a no-op message is informational. So we can disable informational messages by 
setting the bit that corresponds to information messages. And I just sent that. So we saw the event service command counter go up. We don't get any indication that this actually happened, but we could prove that it happened by sending the fm no op command. Now notice that the command counter is 10. It went to 11, but we didn't see the fm no op event message. If I now enable events of type informational, I send that, we see the event service command counter go up. And now when I send the fm no op command, we see we get it. And in addition, the command counter goes up. As we also mentioned, the software bus has a no subscriber event that is filtered. Not all the scheduler app messages have a subscriber. So I'm going to reset the SB filter counter. And then when I do that, we should see the next four software bus no subscriber events. So if I go back to our commands and go to reset filter counter, I'll bring this to the center. The app name is CFE underscore SB and the ID is 14, which I had looked up. So when I send that, we will see in the terminal window, the next four no subscriber events for some messages that are being sent by the scheduler. As a final example of some of the commands, I'm going to dump the app information and display the binary file that was dumped. And then we can take a look at the software bus message filter for ID number 14. So if I display the file, it automatically sent the command that we can see in the terminal window to dump the EVS app data. Then we use TFTP to transfer the file from the flight to the ground and it brought up a dialog that lets us launch the table manager. If we go under file, open, sorry, to the server, and we get the last modified file is the EVS app data. So we open that file. Next it prompts us for a text file and Cosmos needs a file that says how to interpret the binary file. So if we go down to the event service app info and open it, we now get this error message, which is really a warning in our case because the text file, the binary definition file is for the largest possible app info file. In this case, it's not that large. So it's, it's telling us that some of the records aren't filled in. So this is the Cosmos table manager and it's now displaying the binary file of this, the event service app info. And we can see by description, sure enough, it's the app information file. So each, it, for each app that has a filter table, it's gonna name the app and it's gonna list some of the filters that are defined. So if we scroll down, we see that app one is the software bus message. And if we notice the first filter is for event ID 14 and the mask is FFC, so there, the bottom two bits of zero, zero mean that four event messages will be sent before the filter doesn't allow any more. So I hope these were good demonstrations of some capabilities. If you need additional information, you can always launch the CFS, CFE user's guide directly from this page. And this goes through each of the exec, uh, core flight services so you can get a complete description of the API. This is the high level application flowchart that was introduced in the CFE overview lesson. I will step through it and highlight common event service usage. During the app's initialization, the EVS register function must be called and an optional filter table can be provided. The send event function is used throughout the app whenever an event message is needed. It's not very common, but some apps perform a reset filter operation during the housekeeping cycle. This is typically done by an interface app that limits the number of an interface error event. By autonomously resetting the filter, the error events will reoccur until the interface issue is resolved. The unregister function should be called during an app's cleanup activities. Note that executive services automatically performs this function, so it is not mandatory. This slide highlights some system considerations when working with event service. 
Applications should register with EVS immediately after they register with Executive Services. This allows events to be used rather than syslog writes for noteworthy events. The local event log is suitable for multi-processor architectures and it can serve as a backup when the onboard recorder isn't available. Note that the event log is preserved across a processor reset. There are also some good practices to observe when defining events. Don't desensitize operators with too many events. Be judicious and consistent when informational events are used. Consider whether routine telemetry is a better option for certain state knowledge. Balance testing and operational needs. Ask yourself, is the event a convenience for testing or does it help operations? Be cognizant that other apps can monitor events and take corrective action based on events. This can be useful for fault detection and correction. This concludes the CFE Event Service Tutorial. Thanks for tuning in.